Welcome, Powerful Nonsenses, to episode 104. Wow, it's moving fast. Powerful Nonsense. 104. Decent. Amazing. I still can't get over the fact that we actually hit 100 episodes. I can. <laughs> I believe it. I believe in I us. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> Makes me think of Hook. No. No. I've watched Hook. I probably have, but I didn't take it in as deeply as you probably did. See, we believe in you, Peter. No? No. Never mind. Great film, though. Great <laughs> film. Love I'll have to go back and check it out. It's a great film. It's, it's actually like a proper guilty pleasure of mine. Do you know what's become a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine recently? Go this on. is really random. Go on. But I've been watching Pingu. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what? the whole series of Pingu is on Netflix, and it is hilarious. It's what? so funny going back and watching Pingu. Pingu. It's like Pingu. it's like little five to ten minute bursts, and it's just it, literally. If you go back and watch Pingu now at this age, it is so funny. There was one where he peed himself because he drank too much, and it's hilarious. Check out Pingu. So <laughs> <laughs> Netflix, like obviously there is an audience. There is an audience of Pingu fans out there. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think you. Please, the, you're the demographic. <laughs> Did you go, just go on the kids section of Netflix? To no, it just popped up. I don't know where it came from. It just do you recommended want, for you. What re- else have you been watching? Recommended Pingu. I don't know. Maybe Budgie the Little Helicopter next. Budgie the Little Helicopter. Wow, that's a blast from the past. If there are any uh, Pingu fans out there, repping. <laughs> or Budgie the Little Helicopter. <laughs> Oh my god! You see, I'm gonna have that theme running through the Budgie the helicopter theme running through. I love Budgie the helicopter. Maybe we should just find it and stick it in, there. just to get everybody else humming it all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we are not here to talk about Budgie, Budgie <laughs> or Pingu. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to talk about transitioning from day job to freelance. Yes, this is an episode that you wanted to talk about. An episode, a topic you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I think um, for me, a lot of people obviously who know of me know that I obviously went from nine to five job to doing my freelance video work. And mm-hmm. a lot of the time I get when I go to see people who are maybe still working in the nine to five and I tell them what I'm doing now, a lot of the time they're like, oh, I wish I could do that too. Oh, I wish I had the balls. Or I wish I knew how to do it. Oh, you have to do all your taxes. You have to do this and that. And I just thought, actually, it might be nice to put together an episode where I kind of like break down what I would now say I wish somebody had told me mm-hmm. when I decided to make that transition. Obviously... Mine was less planned. Mine was more, I was meant to be going traveling and kind of save some money up and then the travels didn't go to plan. And so I came back, had some money left over and thought, actually, let me give freelance a go. But yeah, you kind of fell into it, didn't you? Kind of fell into it, but there's obviously a more probably structured path or maybe way that you can actually do it mm-hmm. with a bit more planning. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I, on the other hand, I'm still very much in the day job. Mm-hmm. And it's transitioning out, yeah. admittedly. Yeah. Uh, in fact, today is the first day. Yeah, of my transitioning lifestyle. See, you're seeing us as we transition. Yeah, right. So I've I've dropped a few shifts from the day job to put into this. It's great. Anyway, <laughs> so buy our t-shirts. Yeah, buy please. <laughs> <laughs> I need. I got no food. Hey, wait. I'm hungry. <laughs> um. <laughs> the desperation. Maybe people can feel it. <laughs> uh. But no, seriously, do buy it. Donate it. button here. <laughs> Ding! <laughs> I should do like a GoFundMe campaign. Yeah, exactly. Uh, campaign. <laughs> Five pound gets Wayne breakfast. <laughs> Five pound on breakfast? That, I don't know. Like, you could buy a box of, two boxes of cereal. See, he needs pound. less money. Two pound. It'll be fine. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we're kind of going to talk through um, a lot of the stuff that you've done. Um, there'll probably be a little bit of clarification, maybe even devil's advocate playing on my part. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I feel like you're you're pretty much a lead on this one, Jim. Yeah. Well, I wanted to start this episode off with a quote that I heard on a uh, recent TED talk, and it was by um, Julian Gordon. If you haven't checked out his um, talk, we're going to obviously link it up somewhere around on the screen. But what he said was, an employee is an entrepreneur. Or in the show notes, if you're on the podcast, just saying. Yes, that as well. We will not forget you podcasters. No, no we will not. <laughs> <laughs> So his quote is, an employee is an entrepreneur who happens to have one big client, their full-time employer. And I really like that concept because it's exactly how most people set up is. If you're a nine-to-five worker, you work for someone, your main income Mm -hmm. source is that 
that boss, that employer, whoever takes you on. And I think for me, when I was doing nine to five, I never really saw it that way. Mm -hmm. And I think since then, obviously transitioning to being self-employed, I realize now that all of my clients are kind of little mini bosses who kind of I do work for. And I think that's a really interesting way to start looking at it. If you're somebody who's looking to become a freelancer, see that somebody is your client and that person is your boss. And so there is a possibility that you can obviously branch out and have more than one client, which mm -hmm. means that, like we talk about a lot, is having multiple streams of income. It's a lot safer. It means you've got several people who are um, bringing you income. And it mm -hmm. means that if you lose one, you've still got five over here, if, rather than most people who obviously have that one employer. And if they go, it means you haven't got a job and you probably have no income. So mm -hmm. that's obviously a thought that a lot of people think about as well when they're thinking about going freelance. Maybe it is that they're working too much or maybe they just don't enjoy that job or, um, yeah, maybe they just want a bit of variety in what they do. Yeah, or even, and I think we'll, we'll touch on this a lot later on, even they're just not utilize, not being able to utilise the skills that they have mm -hmm. in the day job. Yeah. Cool. So should we just kick off with where we'd say a good place to start is for people yeah. becoming freelancers? So initially I had one point, which I'm actually going to hold off for a second because I actually think the, the main... Uh, Okay, interesting. Is that okay? Well, I don't know. It depends <coughs> if you're going to go for the point, hold off on the point that I think you're going to hold off on. The point I'm going to hold off on, which I'm not going to hold off on because I know what you're thinking I'm going to hold off on, but it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can follow because that was all over the place. Yes, basically the bit I wanted to start off with is exactly what you just said there. And I think a lot of people have multiple skills that they don't actually realize they have. And I think a lot of the time you think, okay, just because your current job is a skill, it doesn't mean that you don't have many other skills around it. And I think mm -hmm. the first place to start off for anybody who's thinking about going freelance is actually to take a moment to kind of really extract all the skills that they actually do have. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that the thing that you're getting paid for right now, because there's probably multiple things that you do that actually could be something that is a service to somebody else. So I think a good place to start would be like to pull out a piece of paper and just start writing down everything that you, you know. So for me, it might be, okay, you run Facebook ads, you can do video content, you can make a podcast, you know how to launch a podcast, you know how to, I don't know, edit in Photoshop, you know a bit about After Effects. And it's kind of really taking the time to list out everything that you know and anything that you think that potentially somebody else could pay you for. Mm -hmm. I think that's a brilliant place to start because then you can really start to then think about what are the bits in this list that I actually enjoy doing and I feel that this could be something I could consistently do for people. And then it's also about looking at actually which one of these brings the most value because you might have a skill doing something, but it's actually very low paid. And it means that if it came to you doing a freelance gig, you'd have to sell so many of that one thing. So maybe you're good at, I don't know, creating a lo logos and maybe, but again, that's probably not a great. You basically need to keep to one side the things that you're going to have to sell a load of them. And mm -hmm. um, for me, it was video content. I knew that video content was quite a high end product. And so for me, that was something that I would pitch initially because I knew that that was something that could, with a bit of, I wouldn't need as many clients to cover, yeah. which is the next point, I believe, is actually finding out actually how many clients you require to make that transition out of um, full-time employment. Obviously, the most people's fear when they are thinking about becoming a freelancer is often this idea of, well, how do I know it's going to make me enough money? I think mm -hmm. money and responsibilities and bills and whatever else are probably the number one reason why most people think actually the same for me. It feels yeah. really, really scary. Mm -hmm. It feels like, what if it fails? I think people love the idea that you know at the end of that month your boss is going to give you your, your pay slip for the month and you know the exact figure that's going to be. Yeah. And obviously being a freelancer, that's not something that's going to be as steady the mm -hmm. minute you start. So I think it's really important that the number one thing, once you know what your skills are and you've chosen something that you want to actually transition into and you think, okay, this is something I could sell, it's figuring out how do you then replace that money? Mm -hmm. like how do you find a way, figure out what that number is that you need to earn each month, whether that's, we did in the episode on minimal, minimal viable living, what are yep. the basics of your expenses that you have to make sure you've got covered every month? And then you kind of work backwards from there and you kind of have to look at, okay, I need to make at least £1,000 a month how many videos do I need to sell? How many logo designs do I need to sell? How many social media accounts do I have to manage for somebody? Mm -hmm. How many, And you just figure out kind of backwards, okay, how many clients do I need so that I feel comfortable to actually leave my day job eventually? Yeah, and it's actually not as... <clears throat> you'll probably find that the numbers are actually a little bit less than you thought they might be. I was mm -hmm. listening to an episode of Smart Passive Income uh, yesterday um, with a guy that 
uh, I think he was his mentor was saying to him, you know, how much do you currently earn at the day job or how much do you want to earn at the day job? He's like, oh, 30K. And he's like, right, okay, well, do you realise that actually to earn 30K, all you need to do is make 120 quid a day? Mm-hmm. Dollars it was, but numbers transfer. Yeah. Uh, 120 quid a day, mm-hmm. which really on client work is really not too unobtainable on client work, I wouldn't say. No. I did what you're doing is high end enough. Yeah, and I think as well, like people need to realize that when you're not doing it under a company, obviously that person who's hired you is hiring you on the basis that you return maybe, I don't know, five to 10 times the amount of value you bring to that company, mm-hmm. which means now that you're a freelancer, you're the one getting that full amount. And so what usually maybe you create 10 videos a month for a company, maybe you only need to sell maybe five videos a month. If they make a thousand pound each, each video that you create, if it's high end videos, whatever you're doing, suddenly you're on 5k a month. And I think it's really interesting to look at it like that. And I think that's a a key point for starting out is understanding that what you was getting at your day job does not transition in terms of how much you should get paid when you're a freelancer. Because I had this problem and you might think, well, at my day job, I was getting about 50, I know know how much people get, like 75 pound, 100 pound a day, 150 pound a day at my day job. But now you don't just go into a, become a freelancer and start saying, well, actually maybe I'll charge, uh, the same amount, 150 pound to manage your social media or whatever else it is you do. It's actually because now you've got a whole load of extra costs mm-hmm. that you need to take into consideration. They're going to be too long to list in this episode, but there's so much more that you need to take into consideration into your costs, but also realize that you're actually taking um, the, the, the value, the, the, how much is it? The, basically you're taking the price of that, all that value you're now bringing, your company, your mm-hmm. boss is not taking his cut and then you're kind of getting your pay at the end of the month. You're actually bringing the value to that company and so your price is definitely going to be a lot higher. Great. I think the, other, the next thing really to be aware of as well is <clears throat> don't quit your day job too soon. Yes, that is the worst thing you can do. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people always talk about the whole, oh yeah, just get rid of the, get rid of the safety net and, and generate the fear and, and make sure that be, you have to make that be, money. Build your parachute on the way down or whatever they yeah. say. It's like, uh... <laughs> and and I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. I think you build up a nice amount of, of clients... To the, to the point that I think it starts becoming unsustainable in terms of the amount of time that you're having to put into it. 100%, 100%. And, and only, only remove the day job, I think gradually if you can, um, but only remove it when you kind of need to move, remove it. Yeah, that's a really good point. And as well, like even when I obviously went traveling and came back and I quit my job, it weren't that I didn't like, I didn't have any money coming in. I still had a couple of little side clients that I was doing stuff while I once I got back from that traveling Mm -hmm. and so that actually was enough of a safety net to realize okay I can cover some costs with what I've got but I haven't even tried I haven't been trying hard to get clients so then I thought oh actually it's possible so I think having those few initial clients and making sure that they are bringing in enough income initially to cover that minimal your minimal viable living especially is a good place to start plus I think mentality wise especially as an entrepreneur once you get that first bit of money from somebody else i think it gives you a lot of confidence in that you can actually go mm-hmm. forward and continue making money yeah. and i think that's why it's, <laughs> it's super important and exactly like what wayne said there i don't think it's wise at all to just quit your job because maybe you do have responsibilities mm. and maybe it might move things forward quicker but if you're panicking and suddenly you get to that end of the month and you're thinking crap i'm on my last thousand pound in the bank and i've got mm-hmm. rent and i've got this and that suddenly you're your motivation you're going to be in such fear response mode or panic mode that you're actually not going to be thinking straight and you'll probably end up just having to go get a job again yeah exactly um another important thing that you have to do you have to do this you haven't really got any choice Mm -hmm. well i mean you have but i mean the consequences will be dire if you don't (laughs) is make sure that you register yourself as self-employed uh with the government the tax Mm -hmm. office um this is something that I find quite interesting because as well, a lot of people think that once you're starting to do that, it's really, really serious and it's, uh-huh. it's like a big process. Oh, what does that mean? What, um, do I have to fill out loads of papers, forms and stuff? But actually, it's really, really easy. It's about one form. It's about one form. And it's just to let the government know that you are doing something on the side that might make you a bit of income, which means that you'll be obviously up to a certain bracket. You'd have to mm-hmm. start paying taxes. And I think it's, it's really easy to do. We obviously put the link in the notes somewhere and you can just fill out that form. And it doesn't mean that just because you've done that now, you have to start making money you're now definitely (laughs) self-employed and you definitely have to start making money for yourself it's just letting the government know that you have the intention of now making money making money yeah 
Yeah, I hadn't thought about it that way, but I think people do feel that pressure of like, I'm self-employed now. I have to make loads of money. Yeah, I've told the government I'm, I'm earning, so I better be earning. And it's not Otherwise about... they're going to come after me and be like, why aren't you earning? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's totally not like that. So it's just get it done so you're covered. They know what you're up to. Mm-hmm. They know that they might be expecting some tax from you. And it just, yeah. And plus that, I think as well, sometimes helps you in a kind of ment- mentality kind of sense. And now you're taking it seriously as well. Yeah. You're taking that oh, step. Oh, yeah. It's a... It, as a mindset thing, it's a big shift because you suddenly go, oh, yeah, I, I work for myself. This is official. It's official. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, and then, of course, once you have registered as self-employed, yes. there is one other very important thing that you do have to do. Otherwise, people will come knocking on your door demanding money, <laughs> uh, which is make sure you're tracking your expenses and your income, uh-huh. doing your accounts, which is the bit that everybody goes, Ugh. Yeah, people always ask that question, like, oh, but how do you keep track of money and this uh-huh. and that? And I think initially when I was doing it, I didn't even know where to start. I was like, what do you need to do? What do you, what is an expense? What is, how do you create an invoice? How do you, all this kind of mm-hmm. stuff is really common questions that people have. But actually, it's really, really simple if it you is. do it right from the start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is the big caveat is that most people wait too long before they mm-hmm. start. And I think if you can, the sooner you can kind of get some sort of like, financial software or some and they, nowadays they're so cheap like obviously you use fresh books yep. i use quickbooks and there's like these you just plug in your card when money comes in you can transfer okay that's a that's a business expense that's not obviously we would advise you probably set up a business account mm-hmm. which people obviously hold off from doing we've we've been guilty as charged for doing that so again if you can get a business account then you know that all the money that goes through yeah one account is for your business rather than putting it into your current account and getting it mixed up with yesterday's Nando's mm-hmm. <laughs> and stuff like that. So that's a good thing to do. But the, the the good thing about making sure you've got this financial software is just that it really keeps you on top of your finances. A lot of them mm-hmm. are built in with graphs, stats, yeah. and can kind of show you what's coming in, what's coming out. You don't I have to swear by fresh books. I yeah, you, you don't have to freak out about having to like, how do I create an invoice? Actually, these things have it built in. You just put in what your service was, what the how much it cost. Mm-hmm. It pings it to the email of the person. It keeps updating you that you haven't been paid yet. Uh-huh. And I think it's so easy to use. And I mean, you can go minimal. You can just go onto Google and search, oh, um, accounting, spreadsheet, Excel, or whatever, free, and you can get one. But it's such a pain in the ass, really. It is, it is a pain in the ass. I mean, I, I've put on our notes just to say that you can do it on an Excel spreadsheet if you don't have the budget, particularly if you are starting out. But It is li- literally like five quid a month yeah, or something. It's or you get not, It's not too expensive. Yeah. I mean... Initially, when you're starting out and you're worried about money, you're probably going to be like, but five quid a month, I'm not even sure I'm going to make two quid a month. <laughs> um, but honestly, the time that it will save you, yeah. I mean, I'm talking from a FreshBooks perspective because I've not used QuickBooks, but from a FreshBooks perspective, it is so quick yeah. to do my accounts through Are you Fresh trying Books. to say that it's QuickBooks? <laughs> I like what you did there. I like what you did there. But, yeah. But, but no. No. Anyway. <laughs> I'm a FreshBooks guy. Jen's a QuickBooks guy. Yeah. Check them both out. And I think they've, they've got free trials available and you can just test them out. And I think the best thing for me is that they're, when you invoice people, they look professional and it's mm-hmm. easy to manage. And I think that's the number one thing. Like you've registered sole trader, then you're getting your finances in order. And I think a lot of people kind of create the business first rather than have those sort of things that have to be there, the structures in place, such as your yeah. accounting and making sure that you're doing everything legal. So we need to thank our sponsor, the University of Northampton. These guys have been great to us and great to you because them sponsoring us means we can continue doing this right yep right so uh, the university of northampton uh specialize in social enterprise so they're all about degrees obviously because that's what unions do but they're also very very interested in getting their graduates to set up businesses particularly in the social enterprise space which is all about business doing social good so if you're thinking yeah i want a degree but I also want to set up my own business, then I highly recommend, we highly recommend, as alumni, that you check them out. So head over to northampton.ac.uk. All the information is there. And we'd like to thank them very much for their support of the show. So we have a giveaway for you. Another giveaway. Another giveaway. Just throwing stuff away, aren't we? We're just... (laughs) It Too just generous. keeps coming. It's like keeps Chris- coming. Christmas come early. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas every week. I'm powerful nonsense. Um, yeah, so we are giving away this book by Junior Junior Ogun. Thank you. I can't see, I can't see the monitor. Uh, Junior Ogun Yemi, who is a regular guest on the show. He's been on five episodes. Five episodes. Of Powerful Nonsense. Two two-parters. So kind of 
cheating a little bit, but five episodes. Anyway, so this book, if you haven't checked out the episodes, this book, this book, um, if you haven't checked out the episodes, The Ultimate 9 to 5 Escape Plan, parts one and two, is all about how you can escape your 9 to 5, if you want to, So if you, you need to. If you are a young, fed-up professional, which is the title, mm -hmm. and you're thinking about getting out of your job, but actually that's a good, good interesting point you said there, is the idea that actually if you're enjoying your job, you might not want to. Might not want to. And, and it might not be good for you to either. And he explains where, how to figure that out, which is really useful. Mm -hmm. And also I like how he breaks down all the different animals and how yeah. if you've got a lot of responsibility, how do you escape or what, just different kind of business plans to kind of get out of the mm -hmm. nine to five if that's something that you want. It's a very, very clever concept. And it's a quick read too. It is a quick read. It's look, it's not that it's not that thick. Look, see? Nice quick read. And we're giving it away for free. Free. F R E E. The best four letters of the alphabet. Well, three, because E's twice. Anyway. <laughs> um, so if you want to potentially get your free copy, head on over to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash book. We'll also put a link in the video. Uh, enter your email address. You might have to answer a very easy question just to make sure that you're actually a human being. And yeah. so a really easy question. Enter your email address. You'll be entered. And big important point. To make this as best for you as possible. If you share the competition with people, you'll get extra entries. So more, you'll more increase chances your to chances win. to win. Wow. So Amazing. I mean, just share it <laughs> and you might win more. Prizes. Not more. Not more. You're more likely to win. That's what I meant. Anyway, so head on over to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash book and you can get a free copy of this, hopefully, if you win. We're back. We're back. Um, so... Hopefully you've got your pens and papers and you're like scribbling down all these things we're saying. Yeah, shall we just do a quick roundup of where we got to so far? Yes. So, so uh, extracting your skills and yes. extracting a list of all the skills that you have mm -hmm. that you can maybe turn into a business. Uh, calculating how many clients that you're going to need in order to hit your minimal viable living number and cover your costs each month. Um, register as self-employed, otherwise the government will come after you. Um, and keep track of your accounts. We recommend using some financial software, but you can use a spreadsheet if you like. Mm -hmm. Where so, next? Where next? Where next? Are you going to... I don't know. Who's asking who? You can ask me because I've done so much talking. <laughs> Wait, I'm asking you or am I answering? You can answer and ask or whatever you like. <laughs> Just speak, boy. <laughs> okay. So this is the kind of fun bit. Well, I think it's fun. Okay. For, for, it can be quite intimidating for people, to be fair. But this is the bit where you get to create your website and all your online presence and all your funky branding stuff. You started getting clients. Yeah. You want to get more clients. You want to grow your business so that you can ultimately phase out the day job. Uh, so now it's just about spreading your wings and, and getting more clients. I, so it's branding and marketing. I think, I think this is another point as well where it kind of starts to feel really official when you've suddenly got uh -huh. a logo and then you're building your website. And people when are like, you've Ooh. got your name.com. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. mean, then you feel important and this is another thing as well like we've talked about this this is further down the line where i think most people end up doing this as the first thing they'll ever do is uh -huh. create the website get the logo get the business yeah. cards whereas actually no you need to be making some sort of income or you have to have some solid clients before you should even think about this stuff people are always worried about oh i want to start a business oh how do i start a website i'm like that's the last of the worries uh -huh. the first thing you want to do is you're going to put on your website if you've not done <laughs> any work <laughs> not even that, just like you don't have a, if you have no customers, you don't have a business, so it's not worth creating a website yeah. yet. Like you can go, but yeah, that's yeah. a debate. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. But I mean, um, all the websites I build, I've built a few, I'm including our own. See, that's a service that Wayne offers that he's an actor, but he can create web websites. So that's right? an extraction of your value that you can obviously. Thanks, Jim. See, promotion. Get in contact, <laughs> Wayne at powerfulnonsense.com. Okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, um, I've built all of our website, our, all of the websites I've built, including our own, on WordPress. Yeah. Um, it does mean, though, if you want a good looking website, you are going to have to spend a little bit of money. But not that much. But not that much. I mean, you can get a good website, a really good, a really good website for about 100 quid. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. then, and then plus your hosting costs, which is usually about a five or a month at the expensive end. Yeah, and I think people get so worried about like, oh, it's going to be really difficult to set up a, a website. But actually, WordPress is probably really simple. You can go buy yourself a nice theme from somewhere and then it's just about tweaking the text. I know we make it sound really easy, but you could go on YouTube even and look at yeah. how to's and how to get started. It's super yeah. simple. Or there's other, obviously, websites out there that are even simpler. But... Yeah, if you, 
I mean, the thing is, you, you can use free options, but free options usually have the cost of not having a domain name. Yeah. And you end up with like a, um, a cheap website Wayne, dot waningroom dot com dot <laughs> net, net dot, dot advertisement things. because you haven't paid dot com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can register that. Don't yeah. We? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, if you want to use a free one, by all means, use it. But it mm-hmm. becomes inc- everybody becomes incredibly aware that you've not put the money into your website and then yeah plus if as well like all right you get your website sorted it's really simple like it's not as hard as people make it at all people mm-hmm. just seem to have this old mentality of looking at how hard websites like you have to be a coder in a dungeon or something like that before you have a <laughs> <laughs> before you have like a website you don't have to be like that it's really simple to get started the other <laughs> the other thing you can do as well is just make sure you utilize uh, LinkedIn. It shocks me how many people nowadays right. don't even like have a presence on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. It's like it is literally like the Google of finding who you want as clients. You can find people already looking for the services that you offer. You can link up with people, you can get referrals from other people. You could it's just such a good platform just to be available on, especially as a freelancer. And also it has a skills list function on there. People can endorse you. <laughs> yeah. So when you're extracting your list of skills, you can do it on LinkedIn as you're setting up your LinkedIn profile. Definitely. Just saying. Yeah. Anywho. Anywho. Uh, so. This kind of like blends in with the whole LinkedIn presence. It does presence. kind of actually, yeah. Yes. It's, about, it's about using your network. Mm-hmm. Um, utilizing your contacts. And actually, one of the things that I've learned um, is actually having the audacity just to ask for help from people mm-hmm. is usually, it usually puts you so far ahead because most people are willing to help. Yeah. It's very, in fact, I haven't yet had anybody say, no, I haven't got the time to help you. They might just ignore me, (laughs) but they haven't outright said, no, I'm not helping you every time I've asked. And actually most of the time, I mean, this, let's be honest, this podcast would not be where it is today if I hadn't put out an ask Mm -hmm. to the University of Northampton who sponsored the show. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Right. And and I think it's just important to, to know that and be aware yeah, I think if you're already kind of maybe your job is in the industry that is the kind of thing you want to be doing. Obviously, there's I know when I was working at a company, you used to go to so many like networking events or you'd know what what were the popular networking events that everybody was at. And, and mm-hmm. at those events, you can start telling people that you're on these, um, that you're starting your own services. And I found that even when I left my job, because everybody in the company knew what my skills were and they were really clear on what my value was to deliver, they would kind of like be my advocates they would sort Mm -hmm. of tell people oh you're looking for someone who does video oh yeah Jem does video Jem does video and so i think the people around you will become actually your best people initially to help you promote and get the word out there and that's why linkedin's really powerful as well because then it kind of updates everybody oh Jem's new job is doing this at this place and suddenly everyone's aware that you're doing that and then if you've got good relationships with people they want to help you they want you to be successful so they'll put a word out to other people Mm -hmm. and i think for me that's been one of the most valuable things going sort of like freelance is this idea that actually word of mouth even obviously we're in a digital age but i think word of mouth number one to get started Mm -hmm is to make sure that people are kind of like who in the horn that you're you've got <laughs> you've got skills available and they want to they want to help the people that need that that thing that problem sorted and if you're the person to go to then I just think it's really really powerful to make sure that you've yeah. got a good network and you're letting them know and if you've been good to people you have got that sort of like Gary V says you've done a few jab 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 yeah. and now you can actually make that ask to people and say hey I'd really appreciate it if you knew a couple of people who might be interested in x whatever it is you decide to do and then they put that ask out there for you and because it's come from a trusted source that person more likely to trust um trust the recommendation and then you'll get your your gig basically exactly yeah nicely put cheers um so so you started making some monies yes you got a little bit of money in the bank yes because you got the clients and it's still early days you're not making like big bucks Mm-hmm. Um, and you're probably still at your job. And you're probably still at your job, um, mm-hmm. which actually is perfect for this stage because you're still at your job, so you still got, actually got your bills covered. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're starting making a bit of income. But you're starting to make a little bit of extra income. Some bonus money. <laughs> what do we do with that bonus money, Jem? What do we do? Well, my initial um, thing would be that, obviously, that initial money, you kind of feel like it's extra. It's like bonus money on top of your income that you're getting at your day job. And I think usually people might think, yes, now I can buy all those little extra things that I wanted to buy. Get my Porsche. <laughs> but I think this is actually like a perfect opportunity to actually start investing into your business, whatever that is. Maybe that is you put that money in to get a really nice theme for your website or you put that money in to buy a better hosting or you put that money in. For me especially, it was about, okay, 
I need to have a camera. I need to make sure I've got good enough equipment. I want people to know that I'm professional in what I do. So I need to pay out for the things they expect. And I need to make uh-huh. sure audio sounds good. So I think if you're somebody who has a skill set that requires certain like um, products, so you might need a laptop or you might need uh, design software or you, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is you need that is going to make sure that brings you to that sort of professional level mm-hmm. as well is making sure that you use that income that you're making and invest it straight into your business yeah. to make your service that much better. Yeah. And I think as well, then you feel confident because now you've actually invested that money to, to be able to deliver a better service, which makes you more comfortable to pr- uh, charge higher prices. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, I think initially just make sure you're getting even like your accounting software. We're saying like maybe you start off initially with the Excel spreadsheet, but you've made your first client or you've got a few clients now and you've got that income that you know, yeah, I can afford to get fresh books, I can afford to get QuickBooks, whatever it is you decide. And maybe it's even making sure that you get, maybe you sign up to LinkedIn and start being able yeah. to target people with their, they're obviously got their own subscription services. And I think, oh me, the first thing you do, because you know that money's just there on the side, it's bonus around your, your day job, you can definitely use it to invest and obviously build your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Any other thoughts on that, Wayne? Uh, no, I mean, just look at, kind of what we did when as soon as we got that sponsorship Mm -hmm. i mean anybody that's been with us since the early days um will have noticed a very quick change in production value sound quality website design brand Mm -hmm. content not the backdrop not the the backdrop it's still it's still early (laughs) it's still early but it's better than what we had a couple of weeks ago so yes um but you know and it's it's making those incremental investments but if you have got a, a good amount of income of spare money while she got the day job that's the time to invest because you're not actually worried about oh where, where's the money coming from from my bills that's mm-hmm. the time to up your because i tell you what if you wait until you quit the day job and then start trying to invest you're going to be like well i can't afford to yeah i've got too many bills coming now i can't get a new yeah. camera have you still got to shoot on a shitty camera and obviously your service goes down people don't want to use you so it's really making sure that by the time you are about to leave that job that you are fully set up you're professional mm-hmm. you have all the equipment you need you feel confident in selling your services mm-hmm. which i think brings us quite nicely on actually to the next point which is uh when the time comes to quit the day job mm-hmm. don't burn them bridges yeah, don't I mean, just walk into that office and just... Don't be like, fuck you, I don't need no job. <laughs> What's that film where you he... You can blur that out, Joe. <laughs> what, what? Did you, you... I did, I did. I did oh, just my Lord. You middle just, finger the camera. You just give me a whole editing job now. <laughs> <laughs> it was deliberate. Wasn't it? What's that film where he goes in the office and just smashes everything up? Is it Or is that Fight Club where he just smashed up the whole office? I can't remember. I've seen Fight Club for years. I don't know. There's a film where it like just destroys a whole office because I don't know what it is, whether he's quitting or something like that. I don't know. Or maybe it's Matrix. Who knows? I can't even remember. <laughs> no, I don't think it's Matrix. Either way, and don't don't go into your boss's office and just start kicking don't shit. Don't go in the boss's office and shit on their desk. Right? <laughs> just start kicking shit over. <laughs> Ultimately, as well, like I think um, once you leave that job, for me, a lot of my actual business and my clients and referrals came from people at my old work because obviously I had good relationships with them. So you kind of want to... And as well, another good point is the idea that I left my job and I still get work from them and I still get given yep. work. And I think that's what's really important is that you're you're making sure you have those connections still because they're really valuable to you. And ultimately, who knows, those people might leave that company, go to another company and then still refer you for your right. services. So at this point, I think it's really key that you make sure that you know you have your solid clients. So don't like, if you're quitting, but you still are not too sure on whether the clients you, you've managed to earn are like long-term clients. Have you got any kind of contracts with them? Have you got any kind of reoccurring, ongoing payments that you know, okay, I'm def- these clients are my clients for the next six months or I know mm-hmm. they're going to come to me for X every two months or whatever it is. Make sure you know that there's some consistency to those clients you're having. Then you know that you've covered those expenses and then you can be like, okay, now I want to go out and I want to get more clients. This is a perfect time to maybe either, which is a really good point that you mentioned really early on, was maybe it's not about complete, um, completely quitting that job straight up. Maybe you just say, you know what, um, I, I, I'm, I'm starting doing my thing on the side. Is there any way that I can move to maybe three days a week mm-hmm. or two days a week? Or could I, you just got to kind of play it like strategically and think about it. Your employee is a potential client. If it means you can only give them two days of your time, yeah then that's all you can give them. you know what? They'd probably rather have you as a self-employed freelancer uh, because in terms of how much it saves them in admin, Mm -hmm. sometimes they'll pay you more to be a freelancer because they they'd actually save more money well legal wise they don't have as many things that they are accountable to so that could be something maybe that's what they think maybe they say actually yeah we was thinking about we obviously don't we could 
cut it down to a couple of days a week and then you've just got now you've you've, per, you've transitioned your full-time boss mm -hmm. into one of your clients one of your many clients which is again a perfect thing to do yeah so anyway we're running quite long so i yes. just want to power through these last i don't think that there's too much to them they're kind of mm -hmm. fairly self-explanatory um it's just making sure that you're keeping good relationships making good relationships mm -hmm. i think network is super key and making sure that mm -hmm. that you are keeping in contact with people we're not keeping in contact in a sleazy kind of i need you or yeah, we'll yeah. need you one day kind of way but it's, it's a genuine authentic relationship yeah and then the other thing as well is to you know make sure that you build in a solid portfolio um i think portfolio is so much more important these days than than cv in my personal opinion yeah i think so people obviously want to see the work you do but i also think a lot of what i've like i don't have to get out of my cv for anybody in terms of my video <laughs> Big shot here. I, I don't need to get my CV out I don't, for nobody. Yeah, I don't have to do that. Because <laughs> the thing is, what happens is your network become your authority. So the people that have already done work with you become your biggest advocates. And so they mm. speak on your behalf. And because they're the person who's in relationship with the person who might now become a new client to you, that person trusts that person already. And so through like mm -hmm. what's the osmosis, they decide to trust you as well. Yeah. And I think that's it. If that person's been doing business with you for the last two years and then they refer you to somebody else, then they think, well, they're getting what they wanted out of the relationship. So why can't I? And I think it's really important. Like it is good to have your LinkedIn profile showing what your, your background oh, yeah. is. Oh, it's worth doing. Definitely. And I think as well, obviously when you have your website, it looks really great when you have like the logos of everybody you've worked with and people think, wow, all these companies worked with you. Yeah. You must be trustable. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, yeah, definitely the portfolio is a great thing to have, but yeah, don't underestimate your network actually being yeah. your kind of, biggest advocates absolutely um and then finally and i think this is a key one and yes. actually kind of goes back to last week's episode about work ethic mm -hmm. which is just don't don't overwhelm yourself with too many clients yeah i think especially when you start out because you're kind of like freaking out especially maybe if you've got that few clients that it's enough to make you quit your day job and then you think okay i've covered expenses and i'm, I'm kind of maybe if you're even like at that level where you're at the same amount as what you was getting paid in your office um, in your office job and then suddenly you think well actually oh i'm still getting more clients oh more people want to do work with me oh my god i'm going to be earning more than i was at my day job mm -hmm. and i think what can happen is you get this kind of scarcity mentality where you're just like okay i'm not too sure if i'm gonna have any clients so i'm gonna take everybody who says they want business uh -huh. and you start taking on everybody and then you say well actually i do have that skill where i'm good at making um uh, infographics but then it's not really the thing you do and then suddenly you take on clients in every angle you're using every skill you've got and I've been guilty of this and then suddenly you become overwhelmed and you're like doing a bit of everything that you haven't got time to actually deliver maybe, maybe you don't deliver as good quality or maybe you take too many people on and you can't hit deadlines and stuff like that and I think it's really dangerous to get in that mentality early on where you're thinking a bit panicky about having the money and mm -hmm. so you actually just do too much you get overwhelmed, you wish you were back in your day job where you had one task, finish that, start at nine, finish at five. And I think that's the problem that a lot of people have. They realize that actually they end up replacing the nine to five with like a six to 10. And they've got loads of clients who are relying on them. They've got not just one boss, they've got 10 bosses and they're all moaning about what they want. And I think it's a very dangerous place to be. <laughs> so you definitely need to make sure that you can really structure how much work you want to do and yeah, not be in that sort of scarcity mentality that, oh my God, if I don't say yes to everybody, I'm going to be a failure and I'm going to have no money. So I don't think I could put that any better, to be honest. <laughs> you were in a flow state then. I was. I, I, I just know what it's like to kind of be in that position where you're just... You, you do not want to be there. It's not a good place to be. You will freak out and you'll have too much and you'll be like, I wish things were simpler. I wish I just could just go into my office mm -hmm. and do that one thing. And so, yeah, I just don't want you to get overwhelmed because it is exciting when you suddenly realize wow i can make a bit more money or yeah. I'm, I'm working for loads of different people and it's exciting different jobs here and there you just want to make sure that you're still having your life uh -huh. and you've got some structure because yeah, then you just end up trading one problem for another mm -hmm. definitely so that's kind of our oh there is there is one thing that i have to i do have to say i put it on the notes wayne put this little i did put this must thing say because i think this is important mm -hmm. when you are transitioning from freelance no, from day job to freelance um, and if you are um, essentially competing with your day job as a freelancer, please make sure that you haven't got a non-compete clause in your work contract because you can get in some serious trouble and you could lose your day job before you're ready to lose it. Mm -hmm. Plus, you don't want to be like poaching business out of no. your current business. It's just unethical. And plus, then you're just killing those relationships straight away. Exactly. And maybe someone puts out and it starts 
that could cause people putting negative reviews on you on your business on your website and stuff like that and you just don't want to get into that problem straight away so make sure you're doing everything above board keeping yeah. relationships good making sure you're communicating with people to avoid that happening and it was a good point that we made so Thanks. yeah the rest of them were yours yes hopefully we've um <laughs> hopefully we've covered a lot of points it'd be really nice if you guys could um if you've got more questions about that whole transition period if there's mm -hmm. something we totally missed out obviously there's a lot we have to cover really fast it's yeah already like 37 minutes or however long this episode is so um yeah if there's anything else that we want you want us to cover then let us know and maybe yeah. we can put a video together for you guys yes uh we'll also put everything in the show notes uh you can find them at powerfulnonsense.com forward slash 104 for episode 104 um and yeah i mean if you've been watching on youtube and you've enjoyed this episode we provided some value please do give us a nice big thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't hit the subscribe button which i think we've determined is down here in the bottom left hand corner not here not 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 uh, here uh, down uh. down here oh <laughs> <laughs> this is going to become a theme it's just gonna just be... <laughs> hitting i keep hitting the mic hit here Yes. Yeah, there, oh, hang on. There we go. The thing is, I have to cut. Because I, I can't see the monitor. So there The thing is, I have to actually cut out all this chit chat for the podcast because the podcast is like, you're wasting my time. That's true. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Exactly. Uh, to those on the podcast, if you haven't subscribed on iTunes, please do. And most importantly, please leave, leave us a review on iTunes. Mm -hmm. uh, we've put together a page on our website to show you how to do that because it can get a little bit complex for people because iTunes haven't made it easy. Uh, but if you head on over to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash review, uh, then that should explain how to do it. Awesome. I think we're done. Awesome. Thanks very much, guys, for tuning in. And we shall catch you next time. See you later.